Good day everyone and welcome back to another episode of Rumble Rewind. Rumble Rewind is a podcast dedicated to the Kong Strong community, updating you all on everything that's been happening in the world of the Rumble Kong League. Without further delay, let's begin today's episode. Awesome, how's it going everyone? Um, so I guess first, let's kind of talk a little bit about the different updates we shared this week. We shared a few things, obviously still kind of in the rookies uh, madness, right? Like the final waves, um, which actually today was the last day, I think a few hours ago now, if I'm not mistaken, um, based on the timestamp to actually claim your rookies. Um, so Monday we had um, a reveal Um which I hope that went well for everyone. I hope you pulled your rare. I saw some some sick new rares coming out there in the mix, uh, which is always cool to see. Um, and then on Tuesday, or was it Wednesday? I believe it was Wednesday. We shared a little bit more behind the scenes of some um, in-game backpacks, uh, some Kong outfits, some hats and masks, uh, just like general wearables. Um, I know, of course, you guys want to see more and more on the game side, which we'll touch upon in a second. And we hear you. We know this. Uh, there's a lot happening there, but we still want to share a lot of these wearables, like a lot of the different, you know, swag, visuals, 3D, like a lot of the things you can actually see, touch, get your hands on, that kind of stuff. Um, in the meantime, as well, while we're also, you know, working, working like crazy on the back end and actual game side of everything. Um, so, wanted to, if you want to pin that up there, maybe um, Ape. Um, yep, just that's up there now. That's up there now. Perfect. So do check that out. Let us know your feedback. Drop some comments below. The usual. We're always listening. We're always watching. Um, cool. So I wanted to touch a little bit more on game updates, uh, specifically around a few things you haven't heard about, like abilities, like our AI, um, uh, camera angles, cord sizes, that kind of thing. So last week, we shared a lot of what we were toying around with. If you didn't see, um, I think we talked about it in our last spaces, I forget, but about the actual court size. Uh, we involved you guys kind of all on that voting. We had our own feedback internally. We took that. We've been iterating on the actual court size, camera angles, all of these different things, as well as primary focus on the game side has been on our AI system. Um, we're going to be releasing an article early next week that really dives into a lot of the questions we see in the community, we see in the comments about the actual state of game things that are being worked on outside of visuals we know that visuals can you know get old to see but we still want to continue to share them you know we can only um continue pumping so much out on the game side because there's of course a lot of balancing that goes into the core loop i mean we're you know there's there's a huge team working on the game side um so we try to share those updates as frequently as possible and involve you guys all in the different decision making processes as much as we can um, so specifically, like we've been really focused on those abilities in that, that AI system, as I mentioned, the AI system is really the heart of everything that goes into gameplay. It's how your, you know, your Kongs act, how they, um, play with each other, how the boost algorithms taken into account, like stamina, all of these different things, which we have been like, you know, crazy on for five months now or so um so again an article come out next week that talks a little bit more in depth about that but i wanted to point that out because that has been a huge focus of ours on the actual gameplay side which i know you all want to see more of. um i want to touch really quickly too on on some staff updates we haven't shared too too much on like our team but things are growing like teams growing like crazy i think between everyone right now we're close to 40 or a bit over 40 full-time touching the game angle and um, that's including our um, game design team as well as our internal team so i wanted to touch on some um, things we've been scaling on our internal team um, as of this week and including the first there's some pretty exciting new hires that just started uh, one of which um, i don't know if they want to be docs or not that's what i never know but i will call, i think the ones that i will say do fingers crossed um, one of which is Florentina she's our new product manager she's really handling a lot of the the glue between all departments between our game team between our internal and blockchain side development teams between our design team product team art team like li literally everything holding the glue together um, Hawk shout out Hawk if he's in here at all um, a new front-end developer of ours senior level front-end um, Arne who's another front-end developer I believe he's hanging out in here as well I think he's going to come up to speak in a sec. Is I'm he? just trying to find. Yeah, yeah, he was going to come up and just introduce himself, but um, I love I was, it. He's going to request to speak in a sec, so yeah, he'll come up. 
Cool. And then we have David as well on the front end development side. So our front, internal front end development team, which that touches all things, which we'll get into in a second, related to like blockchain, uh, the marketplace, um, different interactive interfaces, new website, all of that is touching that. And that has been like a huge blocker of ours is not having full front end bandwidth with all the different initiatives going out. So like our, our bandwidth there is increasing like crazy with some some absolute studs. Um, they're going to be working super closely with Naz and Dima, our lead fronter, of course. So I'm putting all this out so that we can open a little bit more of the like dialogue of what's happening around the team. Um, two more really exciting hires outside of that that started this week as well. Um, one is Pedro. He's our essentially like our creative brand strategist. So he's kind of going to be handling a lot of the both lore building, but also, you know, how do these different brands that we've teased, at least some of which we've teased, other of which you guys have no idea about, how do we introduce them in an exciting way with the community at the forefront, right? Like that tells a story, um, but not only tells a story, but also gets all of you guys excited, benefits you guys and puts the community at the forefront of what we're doing. Because, you know, working with a lot of these large brands, um, they're obviously they work at a different speed than Web3. Um, but, you know, we're not going to settle for anything that doesn't benefit our community and puts them first. Right. So super pumped about Pedro. He's going to be doing a lot of the creative work. Um, Grant, who's our um, product director on the game side, his entire mission is going to be really both bringing our game design team internal over time. Uh, because as you know, um, iLogos, who is our, you know, our game team is doing a lot of the work, but we're starting to move that internal as well. It's a bit of a blend of both. Of course, we work on a lot with them closely um, and we're with them every day. But also, how do we bring that team internal over time as the actual game is launched and then continuing to iterate on the game, of course. Um, so Grant, he's coming from King. Um, you'll hear more about his background soon as well. Uh, but but uh, very big in the um, traditional Web2 gaming industry. Like We're super pumped about him as well. So shout out to all of those people that are starting. There's a few more that are starting kind of mid-month as well that we'll touch on. Um, but wanted to at least point that out give you guys insights into our internal team. So again, we're close to with the game team 40 and our internal team, like plus working on the game at all times and all things RKL related from the brand to the, you know, web three side to the community, all of it. So big, big shout out to everyone. Um, next, let's see. So I want to touch on the rookie mint close. Um, maybe I'll hand it to you, Vape, if you just want to touch on the close really quick. Um, I know you've been communicating out there with everyone, and then I'll touch on future plans a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. So, obviously, the mint closed, or sorry, the claim function closed today at midday Eastern time. Um, I believe there's about 7,000, just over 7,000 that were claimed. So, it's good to see that everyone that had Kongs uh, active claimed their rookies. There's a few that obviously were unclaimed. Um, you know, it's good to see people's being revealed as well. Over the last month, we've had, you know, a really good reception from a lot of people about the artwork, the traits for the rares, the commons, and, uh, you know, how they've come together really nicely. And I think that's reflective in the ones that we keep seeing pop up on social media. They all look really, really cool. So, yeah, so that's closed now. And um, I'll pass it back to you, Nick, to speak about the, the sort of what we're doing with the rest. Amazing. Yeah. So it's been a huge question, right? Everyone's like, when rookies, what's happening? You know, how do we get more? <laughs> how do we make more? Um, it's something, of course, we've had a few options in, in the hat. And part of it's been waiting to see, A, where the final supply lands up, which I'm going to do a final check right now, but I believe it's close to 3,000 or just at. Um, actually, 2,300 is the final supply it seems like there's 7700 um in existence which is cool to see like how active you guys actually are in claiming your rookies and getting that all settled uh, a lot of communities don't even get close to that so so a big uh, big shout out to you all um so those 2300 remaining we have finalized a pretty cool plan with you're gonna hear more about i don't want to spoil your news connor but what next yeah week? yeah we'll be uh We'll have some more news next week on that, but we're going to use this as an opportunity um, to expand our, you know, community base, um, hopefully get some, you know, rookies in the hands of new members who are just as excited about RKL as we are and just forever growing our player base. Um, so I think I think we can uh, 
we can kind of leave it at that, right, Nick? I think I think maybe we can expand a little bit more um, on our plans, but we're still in the final stretch of just figuring out what our rollout will be for this, and we'll be, you know, our con holders will be the first to know, of course. Yep, definitely. Yeah, again, like rookies, as you all know, the point is to start increasing the player base as we move closer to um, a Q4 initial alpha game launch. Um, but we wanted to first, like, balance this rewarding the existing community member and all of you guys and then how do we start to use those rookies to introduce even more new players that aren't just you know existing community members holding or or existing community members selling off to others how do we now introduce them um so again as connor said you'll all like we'll make sure you all have a chance at everything so don't don't worry there's a really cool thing coming there um that we'll share share next week some cool plans and we'll be pushing some more mark than efforts on that way as well um I'll not say a lot, but me and Sick Pencil have been working on an absolutely sick trailer for uh, so movies. sick. So, so uh, stay tuned for that one. I can't wait to show that one to the community. <laughs> and also, like, I'd like to bring up a point to the team that you know, um, within the community, rookies have been received really well. And and I think you know, speaking on my end, I'm very happy to see that, that this floor price for them is not astronomical, right? And I think that we kind of get lost in the thinking that you know. Everything revolves around floor price. Everything revolves around what what DGen plays you can make. Um, but in the end, you know, our ultimate five ten year vision is that we want to onboard people into this space, into the game. And I think that being in this space for a while, it can kind of lose the feeling about you know having entry points. And for somebody who's never even heard of what an NFT is, making a jump in for something that's a point eight floor is just so very expensive. So we're really happy with the direction that things are going and we feel like the community has received it really well. Definitely. Um, yeah, I think there's been some cool... I'm glad everyone's loving the traits that's it cooked up. Like, uh, there's some, some really cool representation in there as well, which is a nice uh, nice change of pace. Um, cool. So be on the lookout for that. The next thing we want to touch on that we've seen a lot everywhere that we know is been outstanding we've we've known this and i'll touch on that is the marketplace so of course con stats um has always been a community run initiative as you guys know which um you know we're very thankful for i think con stats is a, a critical piece of the ecosystem it's done a lot um because we sort of have these three tiered markets right we have the boost market we have the rare fur market and we have the um kind of just entry level kong market um so it's always been a critical piece because existing marketplaces just they don't have great functionality to actually search for boosts and see the true value of your Kong. So the marketplace holdup has been uh, the way we had previously designed the contracts um, was with it actually being escrowed, right? So if you put your NFT up for rent, or excuse me, for uh, for sale, I'm stuck in rental mine always. Uh, for sale, it's actually escrowed in the core contract, um, which isn't ideal because you don't actually have your Kong. It's not. It wouldn't have been like OpenSea where you're signing a message, right, in their latest update. So We've actually, uh, NAS has been completely re-engineering the contracts so that um, it can utilize signatures. Um, and then that is completely removed. Now, the reason being why we don't just spin up a simple Kong stats is because it's not as easy as that. Like we're introducing with the marketplace functionality for all of this. Like it's our own in-house marketplace. It's also being tied into the game. So it's not quite as easy as, hey, let's just push um, like a, a simple way for people to interact. Like it, it's... It's from start to finish. It's literally everything in the full interaction. So hang in there with us. Um, it is the priority right now on the development side. Um, it is something that's being actively worked on. We know the problem. We're there. We're cranking on it. Um, and we apologize for the headache in the meantime. And um, I also want to give massive love to Floyd, who's been posting the kind of, he's been manual Kong stats, it feels like, now on Twitter posting those daily updates. Um, we appreciate you. Um, hopefully we'll all be soon ending this headache of not having a proper in-house marketplace and um, doing everything right. Uh, but, you know, we also want to make sure everything's absolutely tip top secure. And, you know, there's also not easy ways for you guys to all lose your conks because that's the, the exact thing we wouldn't want. Right. Um, you know, and we needed that signatures uh, rather than the escrow to be competitive with any kind of marketplaces. Right. Um, and the beauty of it is as well, like this is going to cut out, um, you know, marketplace fees as well. So it's going to be a lot easier and cheaper for you guys to all interact. One thing I'll just add to that quickly. Um, 
th- yeah, again, thanks to Floyd for, for posting them daily updates with the floor prices. Floyd is actually currently working on a new version of the equivalent of Kong stats to bring as a community initiative so that you can get back to searching for Kong boosts, uh, like searching by overall and what one's got the cheapest floor price and things like that. So there are works being done on a community side to bring that back. Um, it's just a matter of time to get that in development. But I've also been speaking to Naz, who's trying to allocate some time to get that ball rolling as well. So hopefully we'll have something back to you sooner rather than later to enable you to sort of search for your bargains and things like that. Yeah, great point. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of development work happening, especially as we're gearing up for a proper alpha release. Like, please keep in mind that, like, our interfaces all tie in with the game. So there's been a lot of work happening on, you know, wallet connection APIs behind that as well. And um, we only have so much bandwidth, but we know the problem's there and we're on it. Cool. The only other point I wanted to touch on before handing over to some community highlights to vape is future merch. Um, I think we touched on this last time, but we've been working on some really cool things. Six been cooking up some heat. We have some other, um, uh, I don't want to say merch, but ties into merch products that I think you guys will be amped up about that they take time, quality checks, all of that. I have a few, maybe I'll share an image. Um, that I think you'll be you'll be really excited about, um, and so we're we're gearing up for that merch shop. We're getting things ready, making sure the quality is up to par. Um, we have some some exciting partners in it as well, um, so we'll keep you all posted as that formalizes. But we definitely want to get some to merch, especially for all the new holders as rookies roll out all of that in your hands if desired, um, ASAP towards the end of the year here. So it's something in the works. It's um, we're trying to do it a little different. We don't want just your basic merch drop. You know, like if you know us, I think uh, if I was unbiasedly speaking, we probably have the best quality merch in the game. Um, I have a lot of NFT, crypto, Web3 project, whatever you want to call it, merch. And um, still the one I grab, if I if I was unbiased, would be the quality of the first RKL drop. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, more coming there. Uh, but for now, I'll pass it off to you, Vape, on the community highlights. Um, and again, save your guys' questions to the end. Feel free to jump up and ask questions about anything I mentioned. Um, you can get those requests in now as well so that we can we can bring you right up after um, after Vape and Connor jam a little bit. Okay, so first thing that I want to let you guys know is that we're actively working on something to bring a bit of engagement back into the Discord um, during this time period where we're sort of waiting for the game and also the market's a little bit slow. So we want stuff for you guys to do in the Discord to keep it interesting, to to keep you wanting to come back and stuff like that. So we're going to be rolling out our next set of games soon. It's going to be a little bit different from when we done the, the Rumble stuff, which was just the one game. There's going to be multiple different things for people to engage and get involved in. Um, that should be good fun. There'll obviously be prizes as well. So we've got that to look forward to very shortly. Hopefully you guys enjoy it because I've obviously been testing a lot of the stuff out and I certainly enjoy it. So that's going to be good fun. Um, and we can get back to taking the mick out of Ape Antics when he loses all the time. So that'd be good. Hey, hey, you didn't even dox us as well. That was uh, professional. I, know. I don't know why I don't just bother just saying your name now. I've said it so many times, but... Yeah, everybody can just call me Dale now. I'm really not bothered. Everybody knows at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it so much easier for me as well, because I don't accidentally then say your name. Yeah, exactly. It's like we keep saying, though, like, everybody just calls you Vapor as well. Like, we just always... It just sounds odd to say Ape Antics when, like, Dale just rolls off the tongue, but... yeah, I genuinely have to... Th- think to remember vape's name sometimes because i'm like it's vapor (laughs) it it feels weird when people call me by my real name i'm not gonna lie it's very strange i do it all the time (laughs) but it's um it's i've now basically just got two names but um going back to that as well um the community stuff so um the fantasy football we've got Obviously, the Rumble Kong Fantasy Football Guide at the moment. We had quite a lot of people. There's 40 people in it. Jellyfish is currently top. He's doing very well with uh, 414 points. A shout out to Jellyfish. Obviously, I'm going to win because I'm sitting in fifth. Um, again, I think I'm a bit higher, aren't I? Am I not okay? you're, you're not. No, I'm beating you now. 
Oh. And it's soccer as well for everybody over the wall. <laughs> shout out to Kongzi, a special shout out to Kongzi, who's sitting right at the bottom on, you know, on a on a shameful score. But to be fair, he doesn't know a lot about football, so we'll let him off. But um, as well as that, today I put a mini announcement out that um, the Spoiled Banana Society have also got a dedicated Rumble Kong League, uh, fantasy football league for American football, fake football. Um, so I know there's quite a few of you that have um, got involved in that. They're offering some crazy prizes, so it's definitely worth looking at. But as I said, it is fake football. So, you know, bear that in mind. Um, as well as that, obviously, things are going to start picking up over the next few months in Discord as well, because we're going to be sort of showing you more more sort of gameplay elements and we're going to be explaining to you more about what's going on and trying to improve our transparency with that communication, bringing you the stuff that you want to hear, the, what, you, what you want to see. So you've got a lot to look forward to over the coming months and hopefully he, you all, I see you all in Discord over the next few weeks. I love it. Um, beautiful. I'll pass it off to you, Connor, uh, for some partnership updates. Probably always the quickest segment because none of them you can ever talk about. But uh, <laughs> one you can. Oh, he's got one. He's got that one this week you can talk about. Yeah, I can talk about one this week, guys. So um, we've been talking with the Tribe Studio guys um, who have created Lost Realms, which I know in this space right now are a very hot ticket item. Um, so, you know, we... As we can see through the announcement that Ape Antics has done with them, um, that we are partnering up with them and kind of deepening our ties into this Web3 gaming space. Um, there will be some more opportunities coming out of the woodwork like this as well to just give further more utility to Kongs. Um, I would say that's probably around the only thing I can talk about <laughs> right now. Um, the rest of the conversations I've been having and some of the things that were teased are, are moving along. Um, but I'd just like to remind our community that, um, you know, there are different work styles for different companies and brands um, that just move at a different pace. And, and today on one of our calls, um, I referred to us as a Formula One car who is ready to go, driving and ready to, to go. And, and sometimes some of these other brands are like a Toyota Camry that are really reliable, really good. Um, but just, uh, you know, go at a little slower pace than we do. Um, so <laughs> back to the Lost Realms, like, you know, shout out to that whole team. They are really building some incredible stuff. There should be some more updates coming from that soon um, on their end. And we'll make sure that you guys are in the know um, for any cross IP activations that are coming up. Um, but there should be some more information next week regarding Rookie's partnership as well. Um, so that's it from me. Just just carrying on from that quickly, we have got a pre-mint link in our Discord, which I posted in mini announcements last uh, uh, on Monday. Uh, you can sign up to get onto their whitelist. I would recommend doing so. It, it does look like a fantastic project. And uh, the guys that are behind that, some of them are you know, heavy into Kongs as well. So it's keeping it within the family. And uh, their project definitely deserves some love. But sign up for their their whitelist premium i don't think you'll regret it not financial advice not, not financial <laughs> advice <laughs> yeah not financial advice sorry i need to say that i think i heard a toyota partnership confirmed there on jnc's side not sure <laughs> but, but perfect <laughs> appreciate that um, you get a card <laughs> yeah. that's gonna be clipped now from the spaces uh, um, but um, yeah, I don't know if you want to follow on from that, Nick, because we've got a couple of uh, new faces as well that have uh, joined us up here yeah. in the spaces. Beautiful. So in the spirit, as I was talking a bit at the beginning about our kind of internal team expansions and that we want to start sharing a lot more of that with you guys. Um, you know, not everyone always wants to be so publicly facing and get up in the spaces and talk. Some people just like to grind in the shadows and hang out in our, you know, company chats. But um, two of them are here to come bless you maybe tell as much as or little as they want about themselves um but um hawk and navarne i don't know if I, i'm trying to I, I assume no one wants to be docs i mean hawks hawk um but i'll give it to you two whoever wants to start to kind of kick off and uh, just say what's up they're both joining us on the front end development side and are absolute wizards so 
Yeah, I guess I can start. Uh, there's no need. There's no need of doxing me because I actually doxing myself in the Twitter handle. So uh, as you can see, it Navarne. It's it's a funny story because like a lot of people. I'm from Slovenia. A lot of people back there call me Navarne, which Navarne means dangerous in in Slovenian. So that's where it all comes from. So that's the first piece of 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 me. Um, I'm super pumped to be here. Thanks for having me even on the Twitter spaces. Um, it's kind of amazing. Um, I guess I can tell you some stuff about myself so you know who's joining the team. Um, as I mentioned, I'm Slovenian, um, and most of you probably know Slovenia by our basketball player, Luka Doncic. Um, so first and foremost, I am a huge basketball enthusiast. I actually played against the guy when we were 13, 14 years old. Um, he was kicking our asses even back then. Um, we all knew he was going to be a huge player. We didn't really know he was going to be, I dare say, top five right now. Um, but that's just so fucking cool to see. Sorry for uh, for my for my French. <laughs> um, and second of all, as, as Nick mentioned, um, I'm a front-end developer working in React. I'm still... I'd say I have about three, four years of experience, been been through some super cool projects. We're building like a transcription service at our college for, for Slovenian language, you know, because like as a, as a small country of two million people, that's literally nothing. Um, that was an important thing for our, for our university. So I'm super pumped to be here. Like, as I mentioned, basketball enthusiasts look at the games all the time. Maybe some of you watched the game yesterday, Slovenia against France. My heart almost popped out. And the other side of me, huge crypto and an NFT enthusiast. So this is just the perfect space to be in. Um, I don't want to ramble too much. So if anyone has any questions, I guess you can leave it at for the for the QA. And thanks for having me on the Twitter spaces. And I'm pretty sure you'll hear more. You'll hear more from me. I just like want to know why you're dangerous. Uh, it's it's funny because. Arne is is like the ending of a lot of Slovenian words. So if you say pekarne, that means bakeries. If you say if you say sirarne, that means cheese shops. You know, and nevarne just like rolls up the tongue the most by other people's opinion. So I don't think there's a lot of dangerous parts of me. Okay, a dangerous part of me could be that I'm six feet nine inches tall. So. I guess. Oh, I guess that's spot that's recruitment, now. recruitment for NFTBA incoming. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Get, get the paint beast up there in the Nirvana. We're sorted now, man. <laughs> well, I, th- I think also too that you can say you're dangerous with the code, man. Such an easy layup. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a good. One. I should have prepared this for the for the spaces, but yeah, maybe we should do like an RKL, like real life club. Uh, I'll, yeah, be, I'll playing, be on your uh, side. Power right. forward, man. He's also being incredibly humble. He came from Nike, where he was previously working out of like, got the position out of like 4,000 people or something, right? So I'll flex for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll be less humble now. It was, I think, 9,000 people. So uh, that was a pretty cool experience in itself as well. Yeah. Um, but it's a corp, it moves slowly. Um, whereas startups, Rumble Kong, and especially these guys, like as soon as I, I had my first interview with the with the Rumble Kongs, I was like, this is it, man. This is this is exactly where I want to be. And I'm so looking forward to see what we can do. I love it. Let's go. Welcome. We're pumped to have you. Um, I'll pass it off to you, Hawk, another legend. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Nick. I'll t- take that intro. Um, I actually, I did, did myself the same favor as uh, Ar- Arnie did when you're so super creative and use part part of your name as your u- username, being doxed is your only option. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I agree agree with Arnie. I'm so super pumped to be on the team. Excited, excited about everything we're we're working on here. Um, to add on what Nick mentioned earlier, um, you know, not not only is the team grow growing fast, but but after me me meeting with everyone, you know, Ar- Arnie include, included. You know, it's easy to tell what well, well, a super talent, talented, impressive and diverse team we have here. Um, couldn't couldn't be happier to join. Again, been been a fan of RKL for a while, while both, um, you know, the pro- project and the community as a whole. So, again, so super honored to be on the team. Um, quick uh, a fa- fact about me. I could also be on the RKL uh, bad basketball team. I'm just slightly... Sure, shorter than Harney. Um, about six four. We got a big team here on the front front end. 
Um, I'll be his pow, 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 powerful forward, I suppose. Um, but uh, thank, thanks again, guys. There we go. I'm 6'4 as well. We've got some team being built here. And, and I'm 6'3, so we might as well get this thing going. <laughs> yeah. I'll be the coach. the team in Web3. <laughs> Damn, I'm not used to being the shortest. That's kind of whack. Can you imagine that, though, on the concrete? Like, Mr. Hawk passes to the paint beast. Oh, my God, man. We've got some <laughs> legends in here. I, I don't think I can call myself the paint beast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love it. Welcome, guys, and make sure uh, everyone goes and gives Hawk and uh, Navarni a, a nice follow there. Some some welcome love with those beautiful Kong PFPs. Cool. Um, so I guess it's time for questions. So feel free if you don't want. Hold on, I think I got bugged there for a second. Yeah, but okay. don't worry. <laughs> uh, I had a call coming in. Um, if you don't want to come up and talk, feel free to drop in the Discord. We're watching, um, and you know you can always just type it away. Um, but I'll see. I don't know if we have any requests just yet, um, Apantix. But if we don't, we can also touch on like the three most popular questions that we kind of wrote out while we're waiting in the meantime. Number one is, is the game still on track to release Q4 2022? Um, the answer is yes. Like we've, we've been communicating that date. We'll continue communicating that date unless otherwise noticed. Um, all things are on track for release Q4 and early alpha. Um, the article we're going to release next week as well that I mentioned at the beginning, talking a little bit more about the AI system abilities, like what's going on with the game, just bringing you guys further in the loop because we all know that that's the, the number one thing everyone's asking for. and We get it. Um, is going to touch a little bit more on, um, you know, how that's going to how that's going to function a little bit. You know, how we're going to open testing, how that's going to go, um, because we, you guys are the holders, right? So you are going to be kind of the first ones in there testing. And I want everyone to understand that, you know, as we always communicate, game development is probably the most difficult thing to build, right? Like we have a, you know, decades of experience on the team building indie games, large Web two games, like a slew of different games across, you know, multiple large IPs, and. You know, we always say it's easy to build a game. It's really difficult to build a great game. And so that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Fun is the core and center of everything. There's going to be plenty of balancing, figuring things out, um, changing things. But that's the that's the fun of it is that you guys all get to be there on the ground floor before the next 10 million plus players actually get onboarded into Arcale. Um, so be on the lookout for that. But we are on release for Q4. Um, when will rookies get boosts allocated is the second question, especially as the rookies mint is closing out here and those extra 2000 that you'll hear about um, next week. When will boosts come? As we've said, there's a few reasons we didn't initially allocate boosts. One of the main being gameplay impact. So, you know, we're still doing a lot of core loop balancing around algorithms, right? And one of the things we don't want to do is just introduce rookies, assign some boosts, and completely break the core loop that's working now, right? And also devalue any of those Kongs that are, you know, the OGs with the best boosts possible. Um, so think about rookies, as we've mentioned a few times, kind of like your Z run qualifiers is how they'll function as of right now, where, you know, you're kind of, once the game comes out, you'll, you're initially like learning about your rookies boosts. Um, so there's more we'll dive into there. But there won't be boosts for for some time here. Bear with us. There's reasons for it. Instead, just you know, re up on your rookies. Pray for the best. It blows my mind that people even sell rookies without knowing boosts. Um, so I, I know I certainly am not. The third question, not financial advice. Not financial <laughs> there advice. Go. There you go. Uh, the third, uh, <laughs> Connor, is that is that part of your job description now? <laughs> head of partnerships and uh, financial advice. <laughs> Head of Partnerships and NFA. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the third question, I think I touched on plenty already, but is when, you know, it's the most popular one we see is when can we expect Kong stats in the marketplace to be up and running? As mentioned, it's a priority. We're on it. Floyd's doing some incredible things for the community. In the meantime, hang in there. Um, there's a like immense amount of development work that goes into the marketplace. It's not as simple as just pushing things out. Um, cool. Well, Ape, I don't know. I think we're looking for questions in the Discord. Um, I see one. I heard from a friend in Brussels. We have Nike. Can you confirm this? Thank you. <laughs> Can J and D also share a little alpha, please? Thank you. I'll, I'll leave that to you. No. Okay, that was a quick one. Perfect. No, no. <laughs> um, I, I don't know where these Nike rumors are coming from. Um, I, you know, 
whoever whoever's talking to Nike, let me know, please. Um, I, I, I <laughs> I'd love I'd love to get involved. But um, you know, as of now, no, there is no um, Nike affiliation, um, and I have not had any t- conversation well, from with RNA Nike. that we just got from Nike. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> what did you man. say? What did you say? Maybe it was me. <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. So, um, but hey, I, I'm not going to say it's never going to happen because never say never, right? But um, at this moment, I do not have any active conversations with Nike. I mean, seriously, I'm happy to talk to the folks. Like, there's a lot of tech innovation going on. I was always oh, almost a part of that team. So, uh, let's get this this stuff rolling, huh? <laughs> no more okay um right well I've, I've also been checking some stuff for questions and uh, somebody asked how will the game testing work for the alpha release of the rkl game yeah so as mentioned the article next week is going to give you a little more insight into that but just know that the community the holders you guys first will be the ones to get your hand on the game. Like, um, of course, we're going to do plenty of internal testing. That's 24-7. That's always happening. We're probably going to give out to some, like, initial groups, that kind of thing, like typical game development um, process and cycles. That's that's how it goes. But um, given this is Web3, right, it's a little different than we're traditionally used to. Like, um, you're sort of building a game in reverse, right? Normally, you build a game in silo, do plenty of testing, and then you release it and um you know see how things go and iterate from there but um in fact we're kind of in the reverse almost kickstarter model right where we're building the game with you all so there's no reason we shouldn't involve you in those early alphas as we're comfortable right so um this is like we have a few ideas i guess is my point um but just know that you guys are all going to be the first ones in there playing the early alpha as holders, as the early supporters, as the people that are backing us since day one. Um, And you're going to all have plenty of ample time um, to get on that list to be able to get in there. Cool. Another one I'd spotted. Um, What other key areas is the RKL looking to hire for? Yeah, we're hiring all over. Like, um, it's crazy. Teams expanding quickly. Our onboarding this month is uh, absolutely messy. Um, like, there's, there's quite a bit of people joining and quite a bit of departments. Um, so, um, some of the great ones actually that we're hiring for right now are internal 3D modelers, um, always front end, back end devs. Um, yeah, we're hiring as well. We're starting to build the internal game team. So, great game designers with a lot of experience in the space we're you know we're hiring for more um as well as you know there's going to be some marketing roles coming up as we gear up towards the early alpha um that are going to be kind of working alongside especially pedro who's joining us as i mentioned on the creative and marketing side um so really all around if there's also a position like you know, we're, we're super open ears. Like if there's something you're great at in a position you think could benefit the RKL, reach out to us, let us know how. The email is hello at rl.games. Um, feel free to send anything there, even partnership requests, that kind of thing. And um, JNC will get them as well. Um, or just, you know, kind of reach out, cold DM us, Twitter DM us. Um, do know we get a lot. So if, you know, it takes a bit to reply, bear with us. Um, we, we're balancing quite a bit. Um, we're hiring all over the place. Cool. And um, next one we spotted uh, was, uh, do we have any idea on when the next club's drop will be? Mm, we haven't communicated anything there purposely um, for a few reasons. Obviously, market is not the best place to drop clubs. Uh, we don't want to, um, you know, also, we want the demand to be there, I guess is my point, which starts to come around the game in early alpha, right? Um, as well, we want to um, really nail a large partner in there, which is um, a lot of what JNC's day-to-day is going on. So some pretty cool things in the works there, um, as well as like the functionality. So as you know, we're still building out quite a bit of functionality around the clubs. Uh, we have the initial like front-end interfaces that you can interact with a little bit, but starting to expand that build that out, make existing club owners happy, also not ever devalue them. Like that's critical to us. They're the early supporters and then start to introduce the new waves. So 
Um, there's no exact timeline on that. There's a lot of moving parts. And, um, you know, I think a lot of it also comes down to kind of sentiment and how the space is looking um, to release those clubs. Like clubs, we want to be taken seriously, of course. We don't want people just holding and speculating. And we need active clubs building like the ones that are in order for, you know, the league to actually function and work well. Um, and part of that is having the tool sets developed for them too. And we know that there's, you know, uh, that club owners need a lot of those tools right now to even like continue functioning. So that's something that as we're scaling the internal dev team, um, they're focusing on as well is, you know, we're building new interfaces around that, new ways to engage, that kind of thing. Um, so stay tuned, no date on a next club dropped yet. It, it's worth noting on that as well for clubs. You know, it's been a discussion that we've had internally. Uh, we're we're going to be looking to improve communication between clubs and RKL in like a, a formal, official way so that you guys can always give us the feedback that you want and uh, we can take that on board and implement it as best as we can. You're going to see like questionnaires coming out of from me of ways that you think we can improve uh, things for you guys to help, you know, you build out the clubs in the way that you want and uh, to express the clubs in the way that you want within the official RKL channels um, and also improve like uh, communication channels in the official Discord by setting up different things that you can use. So we're working on a lot of things at the moment and you can expect to hear more communication about that in the coming weeks. Um, but we've always got the clubs in mind because obviously, as Nick just touched on, your early adopters to the RKL ecosystem as a whole. And um, we value that incredibly. Yep. Great points. Um, as well as like discoverability, right? Like as players come in um, and we start properly marketing as the, you know, the games uh, starting to be pushed out and rolled out to users, we want people to be able to discover your clubs, join your clubs, get involved in a club, like join these micro communities within the broader community. And so, you know, we're, we're working on the tools around that. Um, so that's a whole other beast in of itself. We don't um, want, you know, we, we see a lot of people, they come in and they're like, hey, what's a club? How do I join a club? How do I get involved? Um, and there's plenty of clubs that want people to get involved. So how do we kind of match the two, right? What else we got, Abe? Yep, uh, so the next one is, uh, is there any plans for creating more arena designs for the game other than the ones that we've seen across socials already? Yeah, definitely. So the main stadium designs that you've seen, which are casual arena, ranked arena, and club arena, they are going to be the initial ones in the alpha, but there's going to be plenty of customization put in there. So if you saw, we shared some things where, especially in the arena, uh, club arena, excuse me, you can customize you know, colors, logo placements, sideline placements, like have different seatings, different um, chairs, you know, different mascots, that kind of thing. So that's all coming. That's all being built. Uh, most of it is already built on the 3D side and implementation side. Um, we will definitely like the end game over, you know, the next uh, one, two plus years is continuing to offer clubs the most amount of customizability possible. Um, like, you know, UGC components, all these different things, something we always talk about internally. And, you know, we know clubs are the most expressive of anything because they all have their different vibe, their different feel you know that's why we see all the different shit talked on twitter which is which is incredible to see and like each club has their own unique set of values so how do we allow them to express that so that is just the beginning what's going to be in the alpha that we've shown um and it's going to only continue to increase over time awesome and uh, the last one unless anybody else is, uh, wants to jump up and uh, ask a rumblecon question because i haven't even said it yet uh, do you have a soundtrack for the game and if not, can the community submit their own tracks? In terms of uh, audio tracks? Yeah, like music for the game. I guess I mean like for the for the menu or if there's anything to do with the actual gameplay itself. Trust me, it is something that we are going to do. It's not going to be in initially, but I think we always use the example in these spaces. It's been a while since we have, but... Like the one I always use is Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I used to play the games strictly for the soundtracks. Like, same with like GTA, right? You'd be rolling around to different radio stations. Um, you see it in Fortnite now. You see all of that. Um, like, a hundred percent, right? Like, uh, music NFTs. I think are just getting started. We're seeing a lot of interesting innovation there. Jane. 
Um, so rugged. it will happen. It's just a matter of rugged. I got rugged. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely working on some things on my end as well for this um, because sound is such an interesting concept in our space, right? And so there's a lot of different approaches that we can take and there's a lot of different um, avenues that are there and that will be there in the future. Um, so for right now, I'm just trying to have some of those preliminary conversations and, and touching base with some really cool and exciting projects as well as different um, brands. I mean, you, you know, if you did hear the soundtrack behind the behind the rookies launch i mean that that's um the beginning to starting to explore music connor wants to say it no he wants to say it <laughs> well, say what man you guys are on me about this but um we did work with cal scrubby with uh for our there we go. For the rook- <laughs> for the rookies and you know we're definitely looking to work with him in the future as well um and you know there's there's definitely when i say different avenues you know Music and sound is such a complex field, right? Like there's been these big behemoth giants of Web2 world of these big massive record labels that all they care about is a check and artists don't really get too much money from that, right? Then there's different avenues of independent artists who own all the IP for their songs and everything like this. Um, But there's definitely a crossroad for sound and i'm very interested to see how the timing links up for when our game comes out as well as what is happening in music nfts at this time yeah if you think um large you know sports brands athletes that kind of thing moves slowly in like traditional web 2 corporations you should see how um audio licensing moves it's um probably the most snail moving topic in existence so i personally am very excited for some of these projects disrupting that um, into this new new world and new age. Spotify was the first, and now I think Web3 projects are going to do it on a whole other level. Cool, awesome. Veva, did you want to give a shout-out as well, you said before? Yeah, I just want to give a shout-out as well to our very own Sick Pencil and also Value Community member, Mike Fogg. Um, there was an announcement earlier around the Chicago Bulls uh I think there's 23 NFTs, all one of ones, and two of them have been done by one by Sick and one by Mike Fogg, which, you know, is is insane. It's so cool to see, you know, well, Sick Pencil co-founder and members of our community collaborating with these, you know, giant brands. Uh, that, I believe, releases what an auction starts in two weeks' time. So make sure you check that out and show them some appreciation on the socials as well. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Rumble Rewind, the number one RKL podcast to keep you updated with the Rumble Kong League game development. Catch us live every other Thursday on the RKL Twitter account from 3pm ET. Make sure to stay Kong strong, follow us across all our social accounts, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you.